Welcome back sa ating channel. Naging mainit nga na usapin hindi yung manu sa mundo ng social media. Tila muling pinag-uusapan naman naman ang budget ng 2024. Dito nga natin makikita mga kaibigan na talagang advance nga sila mag-isip at mag usap kung pera na ang pinag-uusapan at budget ang nakapagtataka dito mga kaibigan ay hindi man nila pag-usapan kung ano nga ba ang solusyon nila sa problema ng bansa na kinakaharap natin ngayon na tila wala na silang paki basta may makuha silang pera ganito talaga ang mga pool politiko na puro na lang pangungurap ang ginagawa gaya labang ng administrasyon na ito puro na lang pera ang pinaggagawa at pinag-uusapan ngunit hindi nakikialam sa problema ng bansang Pilipinas na kahit na maraming problema ay nagbubulag-bulagan mga pipi at bingi ang nakupo sa posisyon ngayon iilan lamang ang lumalaban para sa katotohanan gaya lamang ng nangyari sa Bukor Bilibid talagang makikita natin mga kaibigan dito na talagang gusto na nilang patayin ang kaso dahil kasabwat nga nila si itong katapang na ito Tila nagsama-sama na ang mga pool politiko para protektahan si Katapang. At gusto na naman nilang sisihin itong si DJ Bantag sa nangyari sa Bukor Bilibid kahit wala itong kaalam-alam. Isa rin itong si Kuting ng Norte, ang katanungan ng maraming netizen. Hanggang kailan ka magiging bingi at sunod-sunuran kay Lisa Smags? Magkaroon ka naman talaga ng bayag at harapin mo ang problema ng bansang Pilipinas. Kaya naman hindi maiiwasan na batikusin si President Bongbong Marcos dahil siya naman din ang gumagawa ng kanyang problema. Wal well, mga kaibigan para nga sa karagdagang impormasyon, panoorin nga natin ang buong video at kung bago ka pa sa aking channel, Huwag kalimutan i-click ang subscribe button at notification bell para lagi kang updated sa ating mga bagong video. At para sa sulit viewers natin dyan, maraming maraming salamat sa walang sawang pagsuporta. Easy. Financing the DNR's investments in nature and climate resilience means tackling water supply and governance, forest protection and development, biodiversity conservation, improvement in air, land and water quality, and mineral resources development. in turn to ensure food, energy, water, and human security. Mr. Chair, for the women and men of the DNR, our place of work covers 30 million hectares of land, 36,000 kilometers of coastline, over 2 million square kilometers of waters, classified forest lands in the 15 million hectares, We have critical and varied habitats and diverse ecosystems that must be sustained to support our natural resource needs as a developing country. We are one of the most megadiverse, but we are also one of the world's hotspots for illegal wildlife trade. However, our forests can sequester carbon, our minerals can transform and power us into the digital and low carbon future. Our seas play an important part of climate regulation globally. We are at the apex of the Coral Triangle and the host of the center of the center of marine shorefish biodiversity. Our reefs support food security, not only locally for our communities, but even beyond our region. Given the magnitude and complexity of our tasks, we respectfully urge our legislature to join us on this journey. We trust in your sincere support as we continue with our mission of protecting, conserving, and managing our environment and natural resources. Thank you very much, and please allow us to show you a brief audiovisual presentation on the highlights of the department's accomplishments and the features of the 2024 budget proposal. We continue to hope that you will also consider enhancing our requests locally as we journey together both towards our green and blue futures. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. start.
from Zerk. Could you kindly check the audio? Um... Madam Chair, kung matagal pa yan, eh, pwede natin eh, dispense with because all of that is contained here. So, let's go. Well, uh, perhaps, um, maybe the Secretary can just uh, show us a uh, summary of uh, your budget. Maybe just, um, you have here your proposed 2024 budget. Can you just um, explain this slide, Madam Secretary? And we can do with that for now. And maybe just um, some remarks on your uh, current utilization, the utilization of the current budget. Yes, yes, sir. We proceed. May we begin? Yeah. So for the total number of our requested budget of $24,571,825,000 uh, we have a, a budget breakdown as follows. For the Office of the Secretary, which includes the Central Office, four staff bureaus, 16 regional offices, 76 Penros and 146 Penros, we have a value of 18 billion, 627,000, it's like 627,264,000. For the Environmental Management Bureau, we have a total of 2.573,571,000. For the Mines and Geoscience Bureau, we have a total of 1.4 billion, 1.471449,000. For NAMRIA, our National Mapping and Resource Information Agency, we have a total budget request of 1 billion, 594 million, and, one, and 18,000. For the NWRB, the National Water Resources Board, we have a total request of 210 million, 923, and for the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, we have a request of 94,602. If I may, uh, we could go on to the budget utilization. Yes, please, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Chair, in 2018, our budget utilization based on the amount of 26,994,470,000 was 95.24%. In 2019, based on the amount of 25,657,681,000, utilization was 96.58%. In 2022, 
based on the amount of 22 billion 251 million 923 thousand utilization was 92.58 percent in 2021 based on the amount of 25 billion 50 million 729 thousand budget utilization was 96.91 percent in 2022 based on the amount of 27 billion 212 million 366 thousand budget utilization was 94.55 percent and in 2023 as of july june so apparently june june so apparently. Uh, 24 billion uh, 428 million 432 thousand in june our utilization was 51.65 percent the department of environment and natural resources all right so it's apparently ready now so we can now proceed with the uh, with the video can it be heard? Yes. Okay. All right, let's proceed with the video. Thank you. It's honored to present its budget proposal for fiscal year 2024. The DENR aligns its priority, thrusts, and directions with the President's pronouncement that our environment and our country's resiliency and adaptation to the new normals of climate change are on top of the national agenda by pursuing green and blue economy, creating green jobs, and establishing livable and sustainable communities. The 2024 budget proposal operationalizes the implementation of the Philippine Development Plan for 2023 to 2028 on increasing climate and disaster to risk resilience of communities and ecosystems, enabling low carbon economy transition and establishment of livable communities, the DENR is adopting a climate risk lens in planning and policy formulation. This led to the establishment of a national geospatial database for natural resources, which provides the integration of climate related and geospatial data for integrated planning and informed policy and decision making. The Geospatial Database Office was created and used cases for geospatial information were developed. To support the DENR's priorities, the proposed budget for fiscal year 2024 under the National Expenditure Program, or NEP, amounts to 24.5 billion pesos, 11.2 billion pesos for maintenance and operating expenses, 9 billion pesos for personnel service, and 3.3 billion pesos for capital outlay. The central office, staff bureaus, regional offices including Penros, Senros are allocated with 18 billion pesos. Environmental Management Bureau with 2.57 billion pesos, Mines and Geosciences Bureau with 1.47 billion pesos, National Mapping Resource and Information Authority with 1.59 billion pesos, National Water Resources Board with 210 million pesos, and Philippine Council for Sustainable Development Staff with 94 million pesos. The key deliverables of the bureaus and attached agencies for natural resource enforcement, regulatory conservation, and development are identified identified for funding. Targets under PDP regarding the 25% increase in forest cover by 2028, increase in employment generated from resource-based enterprises and area of green spaces, as well as the enhancement of forestry production efficiency are considered in the budget proposal. It is to be noted that from 2010 to 2020, forest cover increased by 5.65%. Under the National Greening Program, over 2.2 million hectares of plantation were established, employing more than 800,000 individuals and generating 6.1 million jobs. 2.49 billion pesos is allocated for the development of 31,000 hectares of plantation and production of 19 million seedlings, maintenance of 95,000 hectares of plantation, and assessment of 42,000 hectares of graduated sites. For soil conservation and watershed management, 370 million pesos is allocated for the preparation of integrated watershed management plans and the construction of small water impounding systems and gabions. 68 million pesos is also allotted for the updating and implementation of river basin master plans and strengthening of river basin organizations. 20 million board feet of confiscated forest products were recovered with an estimated market value of 691 million pesos. Illegal logging hotspots were reduced from 18 to 16 in 2022. 
952 million pesos is allotted for forest patrolling, hiring of forest protection officers, and inventory of production forest for potential investment. 109 million pesos is allotted for the operationalization of 43 regional anti-illegal logging task force nationwide. This includes the 22 million pesos allocation for the Environmental Law Enforcement and Protection Service, PDP targets on the increase of green spaces, expansion of marine protected areas, effective management of inland wetlands and caves, and establishment of biodiversity-friendly enterprises are considered for funding. On protected area development and management, 248 protected areas covering 7.79 million hectares are being conserved. 1 billion pesos is allotted for the conduct of protected area suitability assessment, survey and registration of protected area occupants, assessment and classification of caves, and profiling of inland wetlands. The Urban Biodiversity Program is implemented in five major cities. Almost 7,000 hectares of green spaces in 15 cities were profiled and assessed. Considered as one of the 18 mega biodiverse countries, the Philippines is home to 22,000 faunal species and more than 11,000 species of flora. It is also one of the world's biodiversity hotspots with at least 2,000 threatened species. There are currently 300 pairs of Philippine eagles, 600 tamara individuals, and over 200 individuals of Philippine crocodiles in the wild. To move them away from the risk of extinction, the population threshold must be met. 86 million pesos is allotted for the monitoring and protection of priority threatened species, establishment of critical habitats for threatened species, mobilization of wildlife traffic monitoring units, training for wildlife enforcement officers, and conduct of wildlife disease surveillance. Known as the sixth country with the longest coastlines in the world, the estimated area of extent of the Philippine coral reefs is about 1.2 million hectares. Mangrove forests is around 300,000 hectares, while seagrass beds almost at 500,000 hectares. To conserve the resources, 216 million pesos is allotted for the establishment and strengthening of marine protected area networks, habitat and water quality monitoring, enhancement of biodiversity-friendly enterprises, and provision of technical assistance to local government units in mainstreaming ICM to their existing comprehensive land use plans. For Palawan, management of environmentally critical areas network, wildlife management, sea-based research, and environmental monitoring, including the West Philippine Sea, are being pursued. 94 million pesos is allocated for PCSD. 511 million pesos is allotted for the issuance of residential and agricultural free patents, cleansing of the digital cadastral database from the lands, and completion of data capture. The target to increase the issuance of agricultural and residential free patents is included for funding. However, this is proposed to be revisited to consider food security, settlements, and other requirements due to climate change and disaster risk reduction and management. Water security and resiliency to water hazards will be prioritized. The President issued Executive Order 22, creating the Water Resources Management Office, integrating the National Water Resources Board, MWSS, LUA, and other water-related agencies in the DENR. 63 million pesos is allotted for the development of policies and projects on integrated water resources management and establishment of water and sanitation data. From the 25 groundwater constraint areas identified, 12 groundwater management plans were developed, 10 ground monitoring wells were established, with 15 still remaining. Comprehensive water resource assessment was also conducted in seven major river basins, providing science-based information on the aquifer condition. 64 million pesos is earmarked for the issuance of water permit and certificate of public convenience, inspection of water meters and water sources, and establishment of groundwater monitoring wells in water-constrained areas. The budget proposal supports the target to improve air quality nationwide by increasing the number of highly urbanized centers with in ambient air quality guideline values for PM10 and PM2.5. Continuous real-time ambient air quality monitoring results show average concentration of PM10 has improved by 63%, while PM2.5 is still below the guideline value. 145 million pesos is allotted for the monitoring of business establishments, issuance of permits to operate, operationalization and maintenance of airsheds and air quality monitoring stations, activities to increase the percentage of water bodies conforming with water quality guideline values in support to water supply, 
food production and primary contact recreation use is likewise considered for funding. Levels of dissolved oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand, and fecal coliform in 29 priority rivers and recreational water bodies passed the water quality guidelines in 2022. Out of 1,142 water bodies, 1,033 were already classified. Of the remaining unclassified, 29 are targeted for classification. For 2024, 318 million pesos is allotted for the maintenance of water quality monitoring stations, designation of water quality management areas, classification and monitoring of water bodies. Significant improvement in the water quality was observed in some areas in Manila Bay. River mouths and outfall stations in regions 3 and 4A showed decline in fecal coliform from 2021 to 2022 by about 100 MPN per 100 ml in region 3 and about 83 thousand MPN per 100 ml in region 4A. NCR also showed the same positive result. However, to reach the standard of 100 MPN per 100 ml, much remains to be done. Bathing beaches in Region 3, NCR, and Region 4A showed significant decrease in fecal coliform levels. The Navotas fish port in NCR showed massive drop in fecal coliform levels from 1.4 million MPN per 100 ml in 2021 to only 99,000 MPN per 100 ml in 2022. 1.490 billion pesos is allocated for the clearing, grubbing, desilting, and removal of submerged garbage, operation and maintenance of five existing sewerage treatment plants, and construction of additional two STPs in Manila Bay to further improve its water quality. Increase in the number of barangays served with materials recovery facilities from 16,000 to 17,000 in 2024. And cities, municipalities served by sanitary landfill from 485 to 578 by 2024 will be pursued. 1,287 solid waste management plants were approved out of the 1,592 cities, municipalities, and provinces nationwide. Operational sanitary landfills increased to 287, servicing 567 LGUs nationwide. Additional 142 materials recovery facilities were established, bringing the total to 11,779 MRF servicing 45% or 17,636 barangays nationwide. 261 million pesos is allotted for the approval of solid waste management plans and monitoring the rehabilitation of closed dump sites, materials recovery facilities, and sanitary landfills. This includes the 20 million pesos allocated for the implementation of the Extended Producers Responsibility Act, 12,000 hazardous waste generators, treatment storage and disposal facilities, and transporters were monitored. Several permits were issued for the online hazardous waste manifest system. 43 million pesos is allotted for the monitoring of TSD facilities and issuance of TSD registration certificates. The target to increase the percentage of surface metallic mines compliant with the safety and health environment mental and social development and management programs and the percentage of Minahang Bayan are included in the budget proposal. The development of value adding activities and downstream industries of the mining sector and strengthening of public and private sector collaboration in emerging knowledge and technology intensive industries such as smart mining is likewise considered for funding. For small-scale mining, 53 Minahang Bayan areas have been declared and 26 small-scale mining contracts have been issued. As of December 2022, the mining sector has generated over 238 billion pesos in metallic mineral production value, 7.5 billion U.S. dollars in mineral export value, 152.8 billion pesos in gross value added, and 42.3 billion pesos in taxes, fees, and royalties collected, generating more than 200,000 jobs nationwide. 48 million seedlings were planted in 40,000 hectares through the Mining Forest Program. A total of 11 billion pesos has been collected from mineral reservation royalties since 2016. 450 million pesos has already been released and utilized from royalties for special projects and development of other mineral reservations. 107 million pesos is allocated for the issuance of mining permits, monitoring and declaration of Minhang Bayan sites. Through the geohazard assessment, flood and landslide prone areas were identified for key interventions. For 2024, 8 million pesos is allotted for the development of resilience roadmaps with investment portfolio for local government units. 
Funds will also be provided for watershed characterization and green assessment of the natural ecosystems for the restoration of destroyed areas due to typhoons. The geospatial database portal maintenance that houses geohazard map for informed planning will be maintained and enhanced. 230 million pesos is allocated for geohazard maps, including karst subsidence hazard mapping. Geohazards operation center will be maintained. The target to increase the mitigated greenhouse gas emissions in the industrial process and product use and waste sectors will be supported. 6 million pesos is allocated for the conduct of capacity building on greenhouse gas inventory focusing on 19 major urban cities. The production of digital line maps has been completed. Production of new cycle topographic maps, cycle charts, and electronic navigational charts are being implemented. Targets for hydrographic nautical charting, topographic mapping, and geodetic reference chart will be continued. 1 billion pesos is allocated for the maintenance of survey vessels and resource assessment and mapping of forest land evaluation and mapping, land cover, coastal resource, existing land use. 94 million pesos is allocated for the research centers and for relevant research and development projects. Information and communication technology will be funded to support data integration and analytics, geospatial technology, modernization and instituting resilient ICT operation and digital workforce. 585 million pesos is allotted for the establishment of the National Geospatial Database for Natural Resources, Enhanced Monitoring Through Satellite Remote Sensing, and Cyber Risk Assessment. Out of 5.768 trillion pesos proposed national budget, 24.572 billion pesos, or 0.43% is allocated for the Department of Environment and Natural Resources for fiscal year 2024. The DENR's average annual budget is 23.7 billion pesos or 0.58 percent of the average national budget. For 2024, the department has an allocation of 24.572 billion pesos with an increase of 5.49 percent from the 2023 budget. Investing in the sustainability of the environment and natural resource management is key to addressing climate change and ensuring inclusive and resilient development. The DENR humbly requests the approval of its budget proposal for 2024. As the President says, the preservation of the environment is the preservation of life. Our environment, our life. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I may just um, echo the final statements of the presentation. The DNR's budget is 0.44% of 1% of the total budget of the country. And yet we are actually tasked with an enormous and complex um, mandate. So thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Secretary. At this point, I'd like to introduce the sponsors of the DNR budget. The lead sponsor is the Honorable Jose Alvarez. And the co-sponsors are uh, the Honorable Raul Angelo Jill Bongalan. We also have the Honorable Janet Garin, who is somewhere walking around, <laughs> right? And we have the Honorable Alfonso O'Malley Jr. And uh, we also have uh, Congressman Alan T. The Honorable B.B. Alain Vargas Alonso. And uh, the Honorable Teodoro Haresco Jr. Right? So, Sila po tutulong sa atin sa plenary debates. All right, so at this point, I yield the chair to the Honorable Jose Alvarez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we now proceed to the presentation and uh, deliberation of the budget of the DNR. But uh, may I, in, in the first place, may I remind everyone present, our distinguished colleagues, that each member is given five minutes for questioning or interpolation excluding the response of the resource persons. And when you hear the bell sound, it means you have 30 seconds to wind up your questions. As part of the long-standing respected tradition of the House of Representatives to accord preferential treatment to the minority members of the House, followed by the majority members in alternating manner. The chair recognizes the minority, honorable uh, uh, Raul Manuel, are you here? Uh, and uh, since uh, uh, Honorable Raul Manuel.
uh, do not have the questions ready. Our uh, 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 minority leader, Marisa Maxino. You have the chair. Oh, you have the Hello. Chair. Good morning, po, to our Secretary Loisaga and the DNR family. Uh, nagpapalit lang po ako kay uh, Kong Manuel because I have to go to the other committee hearing as the lead. Po. Maraming salamat po for that. Um, Madam Chair, I would like to say that the operational plan for the Manila Bay Coastal Strategy is a major long-going project of the DNR and which aims to restore the water quality of Manila Bay. In accordance with Supreme Court decision in MMDA versus Concerned Citizens of Manila in 2008, this year, 2023, the program has an allocation of 1.533 billion pesos, while each proposed budget for 2024 is 1.393 billion pesos. I understand that the Dolomite Sun project in the Manila Bay area, a beach nourishment project, is a joint undertaking between the DNR and the DPWH. In this project, is this part of the Manila Bay Coastal Strategy, uh, Secretary? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The, the Beach Nourishment Project was part of a, a project for the, um, how do I say, the rehabilitation of uh, Manila Bay. Uh, initially, as far as, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it was not part of the operational plan. Uh, however, it was developed in the recent years to be included into the strategy for the rehabilitation of Manila Bay. Okay. Madam Chair, if I may continue. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may continue. Please so, go ahead. Thank you, Paul. So far, 389 million pesos was initially expended for the project and another 265 million pesos was allotted for the second phase of the project, or a total of 654 million pesos. And the project is supposed to have been completed last year, 2022. Were these uh, expenditures taken from the budget of Manila Bay's coastal strategy project, but as the Secretary said, this is part of the reclamation that I will have to go into in a little while. What is now the status of the project? And may we know, uh, did we achieve the ob objectives of the project? And it is worth every centavo of Juan de la Cruz spent money of the 654 million pesos, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jay, you answer. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will turn over to our undersecretary, Jonas Jones, who is in charge of this project. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, um, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Um, based on the uh, report uh, given to us by DPWH, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, the project has already been completed in terms of completing the Dolomite area. But just to inform uh, the honorable body that in um, implementing the Dolomite project, it is not really actually putting the sand. Mm -hmm. What the first phase of this project, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, is that we dredged the, the, what, uh, the Manila Bay we removed the silts, and then uh, after removing the silts and sediments that accumulated uh, through dec in decades, uh, we replace it by clean sands, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, then we put the dolomite uh, dolomite uh, on top of it. So this this project really uh, uh, cleaned the coastal area uh, from uh, the previous uh, situation in that area because most of this area are really. Uh, 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 purely garbage at the time before the before the rehabilitation of Manila Bay. So we believe we believe that the the the, the amount uh, uh, given to this project uh, implemented by DPWH is really uh, worth, um, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, Madam, uh, to continue, recently President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. announced the suspension and for further review of Manila Bay reclamation projects due to the complaints of mangroves destruction, marine habitat de degradation, and deprivation of livelihood of the hundreds of fisher folks and their families in the area. According to the Philippine Reclamation Authority, or PRA, there are 13 approved reclamation projects affected by the suspension covering roughly 6,000 hectares of water in Manila Bay. 
these reclamation projects have, have been given by the ECC or the Environmental Compliance Certificate by DNR. Did we, uh, did we not foresee the co complaint negative effects of these projects to the environment of the Manila Bay? Ang nakakalito po kasi yung pong ating project is to have a clean water. Dito nga natin makikita mga kaibigan kung gaano nga ba talaga kagarapal ang mga pulpolitiko at pinag-uusapan na naman ang budget ng DNR at kahit saan ahensya at advance nga sila sa 2024. Dito natin makikita mga kaibigan kung pera talaga ang pinag-uusapan ay talagang gustong gusto nila ito dahil magkakaroon na naman sila ng ibubulsa na kaban ng bayan ngunit hindi naman ito ginagamit para umunlad ang bansang Pilipinas. Ito nga ang nakakalungkot na katotohanan kahit balikta rin natin ang mundo natin kung hindi mapapalitan ng mga pulpolitiko na ganib sa kapangyarihan ay hindi magbabago ang bansang Pilipinas. Kung kayo ang tatanungin mga kaibigan ano ang inyong opinion, just comment below sa ating comment section at ating pag-uusapan.